Hi, my name is Matt, and this is the second cast that I've done with regards to creating a character, a Red God character, for a new run through Skyrim Special Edition. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, um, the reason I'm recording this rather than casting it is because of the quality of my stream, and just because in order to prepare for um, Hammerfell, whatever it's called with Elder Scrolls 6. Um, I just wanted to kind of appreciate and understand the lore behind Hammerfell, the Red Guard people, and the story behind that. And I thought a really good way to do that is to role play um, one of the characters and go out with a story and hopefully come to understand a little bit more of the story behind who they are what their culture is, who they believe in, so that when it comes to playing the game eventually, I'll have a bit more of an understanding and comparing and contrasting what it's like to have lots of understanding before playing a game and to have no understanding at all. Now, before I begin with the second stage of character creation, and I'm hoping this will be the last one before I start playing the game, because I'm itching to play the game, I just wanted to point out two things. One is uh, my little YouTube video, with um, its cute little subscriber numbers there. Um, this is Cathra Casts, um, where you can uh, find me just streaming infrequently um, around Cathra's story, which is a long one, and then this new one. Also, you can find me on Twitter under Cathra Casts with my magnanimously large uh, followers. Um, I just started this again, really, where I share some of the, the notes and the ideas that I've got, and just a little shout out to uh, my lovely followers, uh, especially Julie, Mashi and Zoe, who have been following me for forever. Um, they're all lovely people who play ESO and it's definitely worth finding out because they're a really lovely girl to be with. And then to the new people that have joined in, uh, Lord Cast and Pope Princess and Mon Spaghetti and Louis Torado Jr. Thank you very much for all your follows. It's really kind of you. And I hope um, something that I bring to uh, Twitter uh, is engaging and intriguing for you as much as some of your tweets has been. So, back to um, where I got to last time. So if you remember the last time, I would got to that question of trying to find out about the second treaty of Stross Mackay and what it was that set that off because that seemed to be set just before um, Skyrim. And so far, um, I, I've read this and, and what's come up from it is basically um, what has happened is prior to this, there was um, a great war in which the Older Merry Dominion um, invaded a lot of Hammerfell. There was a conflict over um, support for Hammerfell, Hammerfell from the Imperials, who was and who wasn't. And there's Shross Mackay down here. And the Older Merry Dominion, as far as I can remember reading, uh, invaded down here and were, were kind of doing quite well at some point and then suddenly the two factions in here the the crowns and the forebears all all red gods but just have two different sets of beliefs culturally um uh, decided to unite and they pushed the elder marine back on their own something the imperials couldn't do um and then they won that land and the the, the start of skyrim has them at a point where there is no civil unrest. So for a long time on the Skyrim um, timeline, there has been a lot of civil unrest between um, the people of Hammerfell. Um, all of them, as I say, um, from uh, of, of Redguard um, descendants, uh, and they came overseas uh, when the land where they lived on, which interestingly looks like they may have shared with some elves, was overcome with some natural disaster or some disaster of some sort uh, that meant they had to leave. And these are the things that I found out so far about the Red Guard people. And um, hopefully I can I can bring more of that to future stories because they will feed into Cade's story, Cade being the name of my character. So once I found out about the, the second treaty being this um, and it's important that it's the second one, not the first one, being this agreement between uh, the third old Merry Dominion and the people of Hammerfell saying basically, get out of our land, you can't have our land, stay away, and the old Merry Dominion agreeing because otherwise they were possibly going to lose um, a war. They were they were outfought by the Red Gods. I'm, 
I've got an idea about why that might have been. So that's what we got from the second treaty, which was about 20 years, 21 years before Skyrim. So from that, I, I came to understand that there were two factions. There were the crowns of the Red Guard and there were the forebears. And um, I'll leave it to you to read some of these things if because it's very interesting and I'll probably dip into it myself as we go on. But the forebears and the crowns, um, although they are the same people, um, perhaps in, in terms of race and in terms of ancestry, they're not in terms of their cultural beliefs. And that's what sets them apart. So one thing to note is um, in the map of um, Hammerfell, the first to come over were the forebears. They they left the, the land that was sinking, the Yakuda, as it says down here. Um, they left that first and they came over and they won over the land um, first, okay? So they, they set the, the, the place up for the crowns to be able to come over. And I've got to say, um, very, very simply, um, of the two factions, when I started reading this, it was the crowns that were more appealing because um, although they came over a long time after the forebears, um, and I like the idea of the forebears being the first, you see, they, um, and it's the same in Skyrim, they have held on to their beliefs that they brought with them. So these strong Yakudan God beliefs and the culture around that they've kept. And I thought that was really an interesting kind of thing to hold on to because these are gods that I've never really heard of. I could do some reading around them. And I thought that would be fascinating. But, um, I, I'm sorry, not but. And then the forebears are different. The forebears seem to have kind of embraced elements of imperial belief and other beliefs that have been settled in Skyrim um, prior to their arrival. So you can see that here that their pantheon um, is a bit more in in line with um, the, the, the religious beliefs that were, were here in the land before they arrived. But you can see there are some that have snuck in. So there's some element of flexibility there. But the, the clinch for me that made me think that Cade is definitely from the Forebear faction is a little thing that came up when I was reading. And do you know what? Annoyingly, I can't remember where I found it now. Um, but if I show you that part of the, um, the Forebear people is probably around here somewhere. Um, it came out that they were famous for fighting. I think I might have read it in the White Gold Concordant. This is the signature that basically said um, that um, there was a difference in the separation between the Empire and um, people of Hammerfell. So when I read the, the Concordant, what came up here was some battles, the, the Red Treaty came up again, but also a little hint that um, these people were great warriors. And from that thread, what I found from here was um, that they were uh, they were referred to, some of the, the fighters in the Forebear faction were referred to as the Sword Singers. And as soon as I read the fact that we were the Sword Singers, I, I became really excited. I thought, oh, I've got something, I wanna connect with that. There's something really interesting about that phrase, the Sword Singer. Because if you remember, I started off with Cade saying that he was a shield and sword warrior. And so Cade Sword Singer sounds a bit more interesting than um, where we were previously going was Cade the Sojourner. Um, so um, yeah, there we go. The, the kind of name came up from this idea that he was a descendant of a, a group of warriors from very long ago who, um, who fought by and lived by the sword. And I decided, and I think it's here in my notes somewhere, if I can find them um, and share with you. I just wanted to share with you the, the book, really, that um, that were there. I possibly can't get to, there we go. So when we open this um, image, you can see here that I've, I've got the name down. But um, what came from it was, it was, um, it was a group of people that lived um, in the, uh, the area of Sentinel, which, by the way, is, oh, crikey, I was able to zoom in, wasn't I? 
here we go it's right here so i now know that Cade lives here which is interesting and i know no he's part of the he's a descendant of the sword singers okay and, and within the sword singing group there is an order called the aura of diagna and then even within there there's another faction which i'll i'll kind of bring up at a, another time but um, I think I like the story that this faction has died out a, lo a lot now. It, there's no need from it. There's, there's a time of peace. So the sword singers have that culture has kind of died out a little bit. But um, Cade is a sword singer because his great 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 grandmother was a sword singer, an original sword singer, who fought for um, the, the Red God people. And I have decided that he has chosen to honour his great 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 grand grandmother because it's been passed down through her line, through uh, Cade's mother, and to him. And they are one family that have continued this idea of being sword singers, you know, secret fighters for the the right and the culture of the Red God people. That's where I've got so far. But also, what I got from it is. The idea that these sword singers, they're meant to be, you know, legendary swordsmen. And um, one of them were called, one little tiny faction of them was called the Anse. Um, and it might come up. Let's see what happens when this comes up here. Here we go. Look, the Anse were an armed group of warriors of the Red Gods. They're the most masterful of the sword singers. And they were known for creating a spirit sword known as the Shehai. Um... And that's as far as we've got. Actually, that's absolutely new to me. That that spirit sword. What the and I'm writing that down as we as we kind of work along. But what I like the idea is there was um, in the order of um, Diagna, the of the sorting is there was a blade master called um, Gaiden Shinji, and he was the first blade master. So I like the fact this idea that um, uh, Cade is going to. Skyrim because he knows that there is a scroll somewhere that was passed down to him and it's been lost either the Nords took it or the Imperials took it but somewhere in Skyrim he knows that there is a scroll that talks about the great fighting skills of the sword singers and especially of the the order of uh, Digna and in there he knows that if he reads that scroll or whatever it is, it will give him some power that has been passed down for his ancestry. And, and maybe this idea of the sword too is quite exciting. So that's where I've got so far with um, Cade. I'm sure there's, there's not really a lot to look at, um, but we now know a little bit about Cade. We know a little bit about his ancestry, and we know he is of the forebear people, and that he's got a, a skill and a passion passed down from his bloodline, from his great-great-great-great-grandmother about being a sword singer. And what's nice for me is as I'm building this up, this isn't me just making it up from nothing. This is me making it up from the law that's being provided. Um, so yeah, that's what I've got so far. And I think that's kind of enough to work with. And when I get into the next video, I'll probably start creating what my character is going to look like. But I have decided that Cade is definitely not young he's not very old but um he's old enough to have been seasoned in fighting at some level um, and he's going on a quest to find this scroll that might give him some answers or some knowledge to some old skills using weaponry that's been lost so that's my idea so far um and that's really it. As I said, I'd keep these cuts really short until we get into some gameplay and then work from there. So if you're interested in following more about this character creation process, please do come and subscribe to my little channel and come along on um, Twitter and follow me there. And I'll try and answer any questions, but I'd actually be really interested in what channels you've got, what stories you write, and, and how you role play, and maybe how you take notes on your character and character development too. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Um, take care.